This is the Schmo with the pro with the CEO, the head hot show of the agency. First round management, Melky Kawa in the flesh, Miami, Florida. How we doing? Oh, we doing fantastic. I just got introduced like a real boss. I love that. CEO of FRM, Miami, Florida, the Schmo with the pro. Come on now. Yes, you're in high demand. The last time the Schmo interviewed you, it was fight week. It was Tyron Woodley, Jake Paul. We ever going to see that rematch? Tyron Woodley, he got the tattoo. I love Jake Paul. Jake Paul's a bitch. In my DC voice, you're a bitch. Like that? So no rematch. I don't know, man. We went and got the tattoo like he asked. We're waiting on the paperwork, but then he wanted to go fight Tommy Fury, which we know is all you know, a much easier fight. You know what I mean? Him and his manager, they don't want to make the fight happen. So whatever. I got something for Tyron, though. Some news coming up. Some big news? Nothing you want to share with the schmo? It's another boxing match. Okay. Uh-huh. Same promotion? Different promotion? Different promotion. Okay. Four weeks away. Okay. Four weeks from now. Can't announce it yet because I'm waiting on the... Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. He'll be announcing at this promotion, but then next month, he'll be headlining it. And it might be a big-name boxer versus T. Wood. Excellent. All okay. right. Which, by the way, big name boxers, T Wood means big business. Big business means more money. More money means more happiness, more suits. Biggie said more money, more problems. That's true as well. All right. You gave the schmo a layup and we failed on that. Speaking of more money, less problems, Platinum Mike Perry, man. He just signed to BKFC. Yeah. How'd that all happen? He fought out his contract. We thought we were getting another deal with the UFC. They told us that they loved him. It was taking too long. They weren't going to have a fight for him until later next year. And we said, hey, being a pro, I can't make the other pro wait because then the schmo won't interview him. And if there's no interviews, business is no good. And if there's less money, less problems, even more problems. Okay. So we had to go get more money and stuff. So now we went to BKFC, great promotion. Dave Feldman, you know. Uh, great promoter. Uh, I, 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 the truth is, the minute the BKFC thing came on the scene, I looked up, up and down my roster, right? I took my hat, I turned it backwards, right? Really turned it backwards. I started to really focus in and say, if there was one guy on my roster that should be in BKFC, that is the epitome of BKFC, and I saw nothing but platinum. So, opportunity came. Dave Feldman stepped up to the plate. You know what I mean? Like Babe Ruth. Yeah. You know what that means, right? That's right. 714 home runs. <laughs> 714,000. Boom. Hit it out the park. There it is. So this is a money thing, man. So these guys are getting more money. Well, I mean, listen. If we're going to make moves, you know what I mean? How's the song go? I make money moves, right? Isn't that what Cardi B said? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is, baby. Yeah. Biggie said more money, more problems. Cardi said I make money moves, right? Yeah. All right, so that's what we're doing. You can't be called platinum and not make a money move. But no, I mean, listen, I think honestly that he, he's, he's a, he was a boxer at heart at first. He loves boxing. Um, he went to a bare knuckle fight once. He, uh, at first, when he first saw it, he was kind of like, oh, this is dumb. Then he went to an actual event, not like, like a training. He went to a training first. Then he went to a, a, an event and saw it. And he fell in love with it, and he told me, he's like, one day, I'm going to be doing bare knuckle boxing. That just day came a little sooner than we thought. So the fact that he's still like in a prime and he's a banger, I can't wait for him to do a fight. Any ideas who he'd be fighting? Because you represent a lot of those guys in that division in BKFC. Man, listen, they signed Chad Mendez. They're signing my guy, Jimmy Rivera, right? Nobody knows about that one. So, hey, I just broke something on the schmo, okay? Jimmy Rivera's going to be there. I don't think he's going to fight Jimmy. He's too small, but... Chad could get up to 170, so Chad might be there. But, yeah, I mean, listen, you got Diego Sanchez that's out there. You got Tiago Alves for an immediate title shot. He's out there. You got Yuli Diaz. He's out there. You got, I mean, shoot, uh, man, you got to ask my boxing guy. But there's, like, 10 or 15 different guys he could, like, legitimately fight in BKFC and have a big, big fight. And speaking of big, big fights, Jorge Game Brad Masvidal against Leon Edwards. Finally, the fans get to see what they wanted to see after the three-piece and the soda, man. What are we going to see when these guys dance at UFC 269? More three-pieces in the soda. A baptism. Three-piece in the soda. Super necessary. Three-piece in the soda. Baptism. And then the burial, I guess. I don't know. So Leon Edwards is convinced he gets his victory. He gets the title shot. But what does that mean for Gamebred? He beats Leon Edwards. What's next for him? 
Title shot. Okay. Title shot. Title shot. More money. So one more time. More money. No problems. There you go. So we're hoping to get more problems. You know, you know, Game Bear likes to smoke. Yeah. He likes to smoke. So he wants to smoke. He wants these guys to bring the smoke. So if he wins, more money, more problems. More problems means more smoke. He wants to smoke. He wants to apply pressure all day long. The reality of it is, is that Game Bear, Game Red is really looking forward to getting that uh, that fight against Usman back, and it starts with Leon Edwards. Um, if Kobe wins, we think he's next, right? That's happening Saturday. Right? Mm -hmm. So if Kobe wins, we think we're next. We need to get this one out of the way. If Usman wins, we might still have to go through somebody else, or maybe it's just Usman again. I don't know. Like, there's so many things. Usman could go to 85. You know what I mean? We can go to 85 and chase Usman. Okay. Okay? So, like, we want the, we want the smoke. But the reality of it is he's looking for that belt. He wants, to, he wants to win the UFC championship and then, you know, cap off his career with that gold around his, around his waist. You know, we were the BMF champions already. He wants... UFC championship too. He's also got his fighting promotions, the game bread fighting promotions. He's doing all that stuff. He goes from doing the bare knuckle in the backyard to having his own fighting league. Yes, sir. He wanted to do something that went full circle. Okay. So he started in the backyard, bare knuckle. That's how all fights really start. Right. And from there, he went to the UFC. And now as a fighter, right, he's been at the pinnacle of the top of the sport. He's had an awesome run. He's continuing that run as a fighter. But he said, hey, I want to give back. I want to find the next game bread. I want to be the guy that brings out the next Jorge Masvidal. It's only right for me to do so. So the next evolution was for him to become a promoter. So now he has his own bare knuckle league that hopefully will create a star like him that fans will fall in love with. And then, you know, maybe they'll go to the UFC or Bellator or PFL or whatever and become big stars, make tons of money, and then do the same thing and pass it on to the next guy. Can we talk about someone else, someone who's very, very popular in the Bellator promotion, Valerie Loretta. I believe she's also dating Donovan Peoples-Jones for the Cleveland Browns, the wide receiver. He's having a breakout year himself. Valerie Loretta, how do you transition the star power to a promotion like Bellator and bring it all the way to the top when you got a personality like that? Schmo, Valerie Loretta knew, learned how to capitalize her like total package, right? The beauty... The, the personality, the fact that she was a Taekwondo champion, the fact that she was an Olympian, and she said, hey, I want to do this. And then the good folks at Bellator said, hey, Mao, do you have a fighter that's smart and intelligent and that knows how to fight and happens to be beautiful? And I said, yes. Yes, I do, Mr. Coker. Her name is Valerie Loretta. Valerie Loretta, Valerie Loretta, boom. Next thing you know, put Valerie Loretta with Scott Coker and Mike Kogan, and boom, there she go. And then now she's dating Donovan People Jones, who, by the way, is on the same team as my clients, Jordan Elliott and the starting tight end, David Njoku. And it seems to me like the Cleveland Browns are becoming one of the better teams in the NFL. Do you think maybe it has something to do with Valerie Loretta? She's got the magic rub. The magic rub. Hey, Val, whatever rub that is, keep rubbing Donovan with it. And Donovan, keep sending it over to the rest of the guys in the Browns because you guys might win your conference. Hey, the Schmo actually interviewed David Njoku right when he was being drafted before the Browns coming out of the U University of Miami. Physical specimen, man. I think he was also a long jumper, too, in the state of New Jersey. High jumper, yeah. High jumper. Set some records, track and field. Also, you gave the Schmo a beautiful tour of this facility. We got this barber shop here. You got the soundproof room, man. Mm -hmm. You got like a full stop shop here for content creation yeah. and brand building for your clients. Yes, I do. You got to stay ahead of the curve. And so creating a barber shop was great because I wanted my clients to be able to come in here and not feel the, the pressure of just doing business. You know, I wanted them to come in here, relax. Let's talk. When you come to the barber shop, you're coming to just chill, get away from the wife, get away from the kids, get away from the coaches, the trainers, the, the teams, whatever it is, right? And just hang out with people that are familiar faces that you know that are not only your fans, but they're your employees, you know, guys like that. So when a David Njoku comes here, a, a Darius Leonard comes to town, right? They don't have to look for a barbershop. They don't have to look for, you know what I mean? When am I going to see my agent? How am I going to make the time work? You want to be on South Beach getting magic rubs? Well, we'll make it time efficient so you can, should I say that online? Probably say not. what you want, man. You're the CEO. Uh, CEO. Magic rubs, you know what I'm saying? First round management. Magic rubs. For sure. Can we get a final message for all the Melky Kawa fans out there worldwide? Stay tuned because what's coming from first round management in the next year will be, bar none, the absolute greatest things that I do. It'll be in this next year. The things I'm creating. First round management's going to Orlando. 
and Las Vegas. And when I come to Vegas, it's going to be hell. You're building a facility in Las Vegas. That's the plan. Yep. I fly out in two weeks. We start scouting the locations. Once the location uh, is there, we're going to put a massive state-of-the-art facility out there for not only the fighters, but set up a West Coast operations for football and really have a presence out on the West Coast. There it is, folks. He's the pro. I'm the schmo. First round management HQ. We're out. Bye.